Hey, what's up, YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, aka Gamer55551. And I am back with a My Two Cent Switch slash gaming video for this week where I take a look at some of the stories that caught my attention and give you my thoughts and my opinion. So, why don't we start off with the first one? And the first one's going to be about. Yep. Octopath Traveler, though. Ever since this game was announced, um, this has certainly caught a lot of people's attention, though. And some people, when they saw it, thought that, you know, it looked like a nice game, but wasn't sure if it was going to sell well, or maybe it will, because of it being more of a sort of a niche title and all. Well, apparently, it seems as though that the game seems to be off to a great, off, seems to be off to a very good start. While we won't, while we don't have any of the sales numbers in the U.S. just yet, those are basically on the NPD sales, and we'll probably won't know until my guess, maybe August. Maybe then we'll know exactly how well the game did in the U.S. We do have a good idea of how well it's doing here. I mean, not here. I mean, doing in the U.K. and in Japan, and seems to be doing pretty well. Um, in several articles posted, though, again, I'll have a link in the description. It seems to point out that according to, um, oh, okay, oh yeah, according to Nintendo Life, apparently the game is basically at number one in Japan by a huge margin. At least that's what the title says. Basically, the article says, "quote Japanese charts figures are finally in from last week, and Octopath Traveler has grabbed the top spot without even the slightest bit of concern from Capel." competitors selling at and selling at 110,111 for its opening week so it's at number one with um captain toes treasure tracker another switch title at number two which that's that's pretty it's pretty amazing for that game for a port of a wii u of course the 3ds entered it at number six and of course mario tennis 8 at number three Meanwhile, in the UK, um, the in terms of the top 10 so far of the game, apparently um, Octopath Traveler entered in at number 3. Um, it wasn't able to dethrone LEGO's The Incredible and Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, which g g entered it back in at the number 1 spot, most likely thanks to the re-release re of it on the Switch, Xbox One, and PC as well. And in the most interesting way possible, um, apparently the game's doing so well that apparently they clearly underestimated and apparently it's being sold out. According to, um, according to several articles though, um, Square Enix, um, and this is from Gear Nuke, if I'm saying the name correctly though, um, it says, the Square Enix developed Nintendo Switch exclusive JRPG Octopath Traveler is more popular than the publisher once thought. Published by Nintendo internationally and by Square Enix in Japan, Octopath Traveler is facing stock issues in many regions with fans claiming not to be able to get their um, hands on the game. Square Enix, who aforementally published the game in Japan, also apologized and suggested that fans either buy the game digitally or buy a download card to play the game. Um, it also mentions that the game, it also points out that for those who basically are trying to buy it off of Amazon, it appears as though, and I've gone to the Amazon page many times, it appears as though that you may be in a waiting period about possibly one to two months for the game. In fact, let me see if I could go to Amazon again, see how, see how it's playing out right now. C O N Amazon.com C O C T Octopath Traveler. Let's see where it sits right now, though. Oh, okay. So obviously it's now. Okay, so obviously as of right now, it looks like it, it was sitting at one to two months, but now it says um able to ship one to two days so it's possible they may have gotten more copies in um believe so looks like it let's try let's try another site game start let's see how they are doing let's see oh let's see. the past traveler let's see how they're doing all right let's take a look 
Okay, but I gotta wait for it to load thing. Oh, that's going on. Let's take a look at Best Buy, see how they're doing. They're doing with Octopath Traveler, OCT. Thanks. Obviously, uh, looks like obviously um, they're not sold out, so it looks like they have theirs available right now. Um, still waiting on. Okay, here we go. Yep, looks like they're having it as well. Looks like they seem to be okay based on what I'm seeing right now. Uh, let's try two more sites. Target. The past traveler, how are they doing? Oh. Uh, Okay, out of stock, it's your beach. No, okay, so they're, according to them, they're out. So it's possible that they're having problems. At least this is what I'm reading right now in tar from Target's website. And last but not least, let's see how Walmart's doing. Fast Traveler. up only okay and their advertisement they're advertising that they only have two left and they point out at least locally where I am so obviously some places seem to be some places seem to be having the game available currently still have some still some of it available others obviously there's going to be a bit of a waiting period for it so I mean this is both a to me this is both good and bad I mean I'm glad that a that a new IP and all is doing really well, and that's really great that people are picking it up and enjoying it. At the same time, it is a little disappointing to see that this is unfortunately another case of a uh, <clears throat> excuse me of a supply and demand situation. Obviously, I think they were unaware they weren't sure that this game was going to be a success, and given where it is right now, obviously it is. So. It's great that it's doing well. I'm glad that Octopath Traveler is doing great. I am hoping that with the success though, that this will encourage Square Enix to probably support the Switch more now more than ever. Maybe we'll see more original titles like, like what we saw with Octopath Traveler, or maybe we'll see some ports of, of other games. We know that their next game that Square Enix is gonna bring over to the Switch will be a port of the DS, the world ends with you. But I would like to see them, you know, um, port some other games over. I mean, I'm hoping, and I know chances are slim on this one, I'm hoping that maybe Final Fantasy 15 could come to the Switch. But I would also be open for them to bring in like new IPs and or re resurrect some old IPs, like maybe Parasite Eve, for example. That would be great if they bring that. Or basically, you know, like I think a brave fan Fusaki, if I'm saying the name correctly, I apologize if I'm not. But overall, um, this is good. I'm glad that Octopath Traveler is doing very well. Um, I've played a bit of the game and I am enjoying it a bit though. I don't have a review yet, so I'll get to it soon. But overall, I'm glad the game is doing well. Hopefully they can reach this, fix the supply and demand situation. And one last thing I do want to point out is that there was recently some reports coming out or some videos that have been put out of supposedly demand for the game to come to the PS4 or at least there's been some people searching up Octopath Traveler PS4 or, or something like that. Now I don't know the whole details of how widespread this is and I don't know what kind of situation Octopath Traveler is in terms of an exclusive. Um, if we're talking about a time exclusive if that's the case then there's a good chance it could come to other systems. Uh, take for example, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. Last year that was released on the PS4. Supposedly, from what we understand, that may have been a time exclusive, which is the reason why we're seeing it now on the Xbox One, PS4, 
and a Nintendo Switch. However, if this is the kind, if this is an exclusive in the way that Bayonetta 2 is, where in this case, Nintendo said, yeah, we'll make this game happen, we'll fund, we'll fund it, make it exclusive to our system, and we'll let it happen, then if that's the case, if it's like what Bayonetta 2, 2 was, then unless Nintendo is doing something like what Microsoft is doing with Minecraft, I would say the, the odds of it coming to another system are zero to none because I can't see Nintendo having a game that they fund, they funded with their own money, wants to appear on another system. Again, I don't know exactly what 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 kind of deal was worked out, what kind of exclusive deal was worked out, but if it's but if it's like the Bayonetta 2 situation, I can't see it going on, seeing it on other systems like the PS4 or the Xbox One or the PC for that matter. So we'll have to wait and see, but overall, I'm glad the game is doing very well. Hopefully it might encourage people to pick up a Nintendo Switch or it maybe those who own a Switch and want to try something interesting to try out. This is one of those games to try out. So overall, great that Octopath Traveler is doing very well. Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we're going to get to part two of our video, and that is that apparently we that we might be getting the South Park, the Stick of Truth, to the Nintendo Switch. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of our video, and for this one, we're going to be talking about what was tucked away in one of Ubisoft's financial earnings that they recently released, and that was, of course, the, the possible announcement, or most likely the announcement of South Park The Stick of Truth um, coming to the Nintendo Switch. Now, for those who may remember last year, Ubisoft released the game South Park Fractured But Whole, a sequel to The Stick of Truth. And for those who have purchased that game, though, would receive a free download code for The Stick of Truth, which would later be re-released physically for the PS4 and the Xbox One. Now, I played Fractured But Whole and Stick of Truth, and I enjoyed both those games, though. I'm not the biggest South Park fan out there, but they were fun games, and there were certainly funny moments that South Park is known for. They're known for controversial stuff, but they're also known to be very funny as well. Well, earlier this year, of course, Fractured But Whole was also released later for the Nintendo Switch. And it appears as though that the game may have done well enough to convince Ubisoft to bring the game over. In basically, in basically a article from Nintendo Life, um, again, links will be in the description though, it says, earlier this year in April, Ubisoft released South Park The Fractured But Whole on the Nintendo Switch. As satisfying as the bad manner turn-based RPG might have been, it didn't hide the fact that the original game was still unplayable on Nintendo's latest device. Now in the latest financial report, Ubisoft is looking to re certify that situation, apologize if I'm saying the name incorrectly, with the reveal of South Park The Stick of Truth, which will be released digitally on the Nintendo eShop this, this this December. So according to their financial report, they had a listing of packages in digital and digital only games, and which in the package of digital, they showed off Legendary Fishing that's coming to the PS4 and Nintendo Switch. They had um, Far Cry's Dead Living Zombies and Lost on Mars. This is under the digital only for Honor. Our Honors, Season 7, Storm and Furry, um, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands, Special Operation 2, um, Hungry um, Shark World, Is This Love, Mystery Spell, um, South Park's The Stick of, Stick of Truth, under digital only, South Park The Fresh But Whole, Bring the Crunch, and Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege Season 3, according to this. It's worth pointing out that in terms of the breakdown on their sales platform, according to the fiscal earning, um, the Switch did go up from their first quarter 2017-18 from 1% all the way up to 5%. So, I mean, it's it's not huge, but certainly it's growing. Hopefully this will convince them to maybe 
support the Switch more. Um, it, it, while in the meantime, uh, PS4 saw a drop from 44% from first quarter 2017-2018 to 38% from 2018 to 2019. Xbox One is at the same at 22%. Um, PC saw a jump from 21% from first quarter 2017-2018 to first quarter 2018-2019 up to 24 percent um mobile still stay the same at um eight percent um others it's still at two percent and x 360 psv we we use all drop from two to one percent although i don't know how many people are supporting that though so all i have to say is that the announcement of stick of truth coming to the nintendo switch is a nice addition i did play that on the ps4 and i thought the game definitely had a bit more of a Mario RPG feel to it than, say, Fractured But Whole was. So it is very nice that it is coming to the Nintendo Switch. I'm a little disappointed, however, that it's going to be digital only. I would have loved to see a physical copy since the PS4 and Xbox One are getting physical, just recently got the physical copies. It would have been nice if Ubisoft would have made a physical copy of the Stick of Truth. But in either case, we are still getting the game. Hopefully all the DLCs will be in this, this version of the Stick of Truth since um, Fracture Blood Hole are still are getting new DLCs it's, and the Switch version is still getting it as well. So um, here's the hope being that when the Stick of Truth co does come out to the Nintendo Switch that it gets all the DLCs. And here's the hoping though that eventually we do get a physical copy though. I would love to have seen a physical copy of the Stick of Truth on the Nintendo Switch. Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we're going to get to part three of our video, and this one's going to be regarding the Banner Saga trilogy and something that might upset some people regarding the physical copy that some may not be comfortable with. So we're going to take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part three of our My True Scent video. And for this one, we're going to be talking about the Banner Saga trilogy. Now, this was, I think, a three-part game that was released, you know, from PC to the PS4 and Xbox One. I believe it was a successful crowdfunding project. And earlier this year, it was released onto the Nintendo Switch. I think they started first with the Banner Saga 3 before they went to 2 and 1, although I thought it was kind of, in fact, I thought it was kind of odd that they started with the third one. Well, it appears as though that the Banner Saga trilogy is going to be coming in in a physical form, which according to several articles, including Nintendo Life, it was reported that Gearbox Publishing, you know, the same studio that worked on the one of my favorite FPS shooters from them, the Borderlands series, and of course the controversial, and they still lie and defend, defend that game, Alien Colonial Marines, which we now learn that basically a typo in it is what made the AI look bad. Although, just, you know what? That's on Randy Pitchfork. You know, he made the whole situation worse than it is. But beyond that, though, um, they've been getting into the third-party publishing as of late, and their latest partnership will see to bring the Banner Saga trilogy to retails with physical edition. So basically, all three games will be coming to the Nintendo Switch, and they will be published by Gearbox, which is both, that's the good news, putting aside the Alien Colonial Marines debacle. So what's the bad news? Well, apparently, according to from what we understand, the same art article has read that, uh, the same article from Nintendo Life, again, link in the description, it says, the Banner Saga games have been positively, positively received on the Nintendo Switch thus far, so it's no surprise last week's announcement of a retail version was welcomed with open arms by fans of the turn-based RPG. Now the box art for the full retail game has emerged and already alarm bells are ringing. The cover states that the game requires an internet download and a micro SD card. For anyone who's been patiently waiting to purchase all three episodes on a single cartridge, this news may come up to somewhat of a disappointment. 
At this point in time, no exact details about the size of the download requires of or how much storage you'll need in, available in order to play the game. Um, according to the same article in Nintendo Life, a breakdown of how much each game, how much gigabytes were needed if you were to download the digital version was the first ba Banner Saga required a, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, 3.1 gigabytes of download. Um, Banner Saga 2, um, 4.5 gigabytes of download. Um, and Banner Saga 3 required a 5.4 gigabytes of download. If we um, add all those up, though, just a second, let me get my calculator out. If we were to add that up, 3.1 plus 4.5 plus 5.4 equals, meaning, let me move this out of the way, meaning that you probably were going to need 13 gigabytes to play, download all three games. So my response to this though is kind of mixed though. On one hand, I think it's great that we're getting a physical copy of the Banner Saga though. It is it's definitely a game I wanted to try out. I kind of hold off buying the digital version because I want to try to get the physical copy. But at the same time, I am a little bit concerned with the decision of the so-called, you know, require internet download though. And according to Amazon's page, which I'll have a link in the description, when you look at some of the pictures, it does say internet download and micro SD card require. It does kind of raise the question of how much um, how much space are you going to require? And we've seen certain games done this before. Um, some games have been okay with it, like Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus only required an 8 gigabyte download. But there have been other cases where some games, like I think NBA 2K or WWE 2K, which was a debacle of the mess to begin with, there were, I think, stories of how a 32 gigabyte download was, ne was needed for that one. Um, and I think it was a 14, a 12 or 14 gigabyte download for LA Noir. So it, it, it is somewhat concerning and it does highlight a, a problem with one of the problems the Nintendo Switch has. Don't get me wrong, I like the Nintendo Switch, I does, but it feel, but there have been some companies that have sort of been finding a sort of a, sort of a cheap, sort of a cheap way in terms of releasing a physical form, just release it like this and then have people download the rest and obviously a lot of people are kind of being annoyed by that and this may this decision may turn off some people if it requires a digital download it will basically be interesting to see how much of a download is required and which which is needed i mean are we going to have to are we only going to get one one of the games on physical and the other two will have to be downloaded and all are we going to get two of the games and then only have one of them download and all? So it, it it does raise some concerns about this. And I can understand how some people can be turned off in this situation. So overall, great that the Banner Saga trilogy is getting a physical release on the Nintendo Switch. But the internet requirement download obviously is going to turn some people off. Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we're going to get to part four of our video, and this one has to do with Arcane Studio, the same studio that is known for Dishonor and the Dishonor trilogy and the Prey game that they released last year. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part four of our My True Scent video for this week. And this one, we're going to be taking a look at a posting that Arcane Studio recently put out for a possibility of an upcoming project. Now, for those who are not familiar with Arcane Studio, if I'm saying the name correctly, apologize if I'm not. They're the studio that created um, Dishonor 1 and 2 and Prey. Um, Dishonor 1 was released on the 360, PS3, and PC. It was later remade for the PS4 and Xbox One. Dishonor 2 was also made 
for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Although I've heard some people complain about Dishonored 2, though I haven't played it, so I really don't know 100% sure 100% about that one. And recently they re they released their version of Prey, which I mean again I haven't fully tried that game out as well. I really gotta try those games out. Well, apparently it seems that Arcane Studio might be developing not only another multi-platform game, but it looks like that game could be coming to the Nintendo Switch. In an article posted on on Nintendo Life and also posted on the site AFJV um, Employment or something. Uh, again, I'll have a link in the description. You can check it out. It... Um, Basically, it says, quote, Arcane Studio, the French developer behind titles like Dishonor, Dishonor 2, and Prey, has listed a job advertisement which asks app that applications have knowledge of Switch development kit. The studio has never released a title on a Nintendo platform, with Call of Duty World at War online, multi online multiplayer maps being the only thing Nintendo fans have ever received from it, um, I did not <laughs> not know that. So the Switch specific mentioned job in the job application suggests that the console has a good chance of being supported for a future project. The Switch is listed alongside other platforms regarding support by the developer under desired skills section. It, basically what they're saying according to the listing, it points out experience in one or more technical areas, animation, audio, math, physics, network, low-level architect, uh, memory I.O., experience profiling and optimizing CPU codes, experience with game middleware technology such as Havoc Physics and Cloth, Face FX and WYs, develop experience on consoles or PC with at least one game shipped, and knowledge of platform SDKs, PS4, Xbox One, Windows, Linux, um, and Nintendo Switch. The article also concludes that um, most well the listing said that the role off on offer are for engine, engine programmers who should expect to join the studio in creating ambitious AAA games. This could hint at another sequel in the Dishonored series or even one for Prey, but it could be but could just as easily be an entirely new project instead. Hopefully we'll see something in that really is ambitious as the job listings mentions and hopefully it does arrive on the Switch. Um, while this doesn't officially declare that Arcane Studio is making a game for the Nintendo Switch, it certainly opens the door to the possibility that they could be making one, making a game for the Nintendo Switch. And honestly, I think that's good. The more developers that come to the Nintendo Switch, the better. And given Bethesda has supposedly come out and throw their support behind the Nintendo Switch as of right now, it does open the door to the possibility that Arcane Studio could, I mean, and this is a could, could be bringing um, Dishonor 1 and 2 to the Nintendo Switch or Prey, or it's possible they could it could be an all brand new game. Some mentioned the possibility of Dishonor 3, that could be a possible scenario, or it could be a brand new IP or maybe resurrecting an old IP to be exact. So who knows for certain and while it meant like I said, while it meant while they do mention the Nintendo Switch, it doesn't automatically mean that they're gonna bring that game to the Nintendo Switch. That says it does open the door to that possibility. So here's to hoping we hear more about what Arcane Studio might be working on and hopefully whatever they are working on does come to the Nintendo Switch considering how popular the Switch is right now and given the current situation it is in. And while I certainly would be open to them tackling a brand new IP or resurrecting an old IP, I would be down if they were to bring Dishonor 1 and 2 to the Nintendo Switch or Prey to the Nintendo Switch. But we'll have to wait and see. But overall, glad that Arcane Studio is hiring people and glad that they mentioned the Nintendo Switch. It does bring hope that they will support the Nintendo Switch down the road. Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break and when we get back we're going to get to part five. I normally don't do a fifth part of our My Two Cent, but I'm going to do a fifth one and this has to do with the recent decision regarding Shadows of War and the decision that I think a lot of people have been 
wait for for a while though. It's sort of a better late than never kind of situation. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part, the fifth and final part of our Mind Chief Set video for this week. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at, and this is a non-Nintendo one, one though. This one is about regarding the game Middle Earth Shadow of War. As you all know, the game came out last year, and while the game certainly sold well, it had was in mar mired in controversy. Mostly it had to do with the whole loot box and microtransaction, which was a big thing back in 2017 last year. Of course, that whole thing got under the, was, got, was apparently pissed off a whole lot of people, especially what happened with Star Wars uh, Battlefront 2, and we all know how that played out as well. And well, while Middle Earth Shadow War may have dodged the bullet, Though, compared to Star Wars Battlefront 2, that doesn't say that people did not like what what WB Games and Mon Monolith Studio, I think if I'm saying the name correctly, were doing with Middle Earth Shadow of War. Then again, WB Games is known for some of their controversies, such as how they treated Batman Arkham Origins, where supposedly they were more focused on DLCs rather than fixing any of the bugs in the game. Arkham Knights, where basically they released the PC version in the worst possible state ever. And then of course, the whole controversy with Middle Earth Shadow of War. Well, apparently it seems as though they recently released an update that has basically changed the game completely and has finally gotten rid of something that people have been hoping that they got rid of and that is the microtransactions. In several articles according that I'll have a link in the description, According to Rock Paper Shotgun, it points out that Middle Earth Shadow of War much mingling, apologize if I'm saying the name incorrectly, loot boxes are gone for good thanks to a major patch today. The Blood Splatter Assassin's Creed slash Batman slash Pokemon hybrid no longer crams orcs into chests to be sold off for cash. If you want them to join your army now, you'll have to do it the old fashioned way, beat them up and force them to. The massive patch also includes some game changing changes, tweaks. Below my thought are some of the biggest changes. Um, the biggest change says here for many here is that you can't buy orcs at all, no matter how much um, Mirin, M I R I A N, now the sole currency of the game you have. You can, however, buy training orders to upgrade and modify your existing orc horde. If you want to bring a favorite a favorite officer with you to a new region you can spend some money to pack their bags and bring them with you um shadow wars the overlong end game segment of shadows of war has been torched um t-r-u-n-c-a-t-e-d again um apologize if i'm saying the name incorrectly as the game now has a proper endless mode for players who want to fight forever. Shadow Wars now rewards some special gears as you progress through it and there's even some new dialogue sequence on the, on the way to that final ending. Progression and leveling in general has been tweaked. The max level cap is now 80 for you with a new prestige skill system which I'm, which the person's pointing out that he's eager to dig into and orcs can go as high as 85. My money can also be spent to upgrade favorite but outgrown gear to your current level and XP's rewards for some activities have been included. Um, the Nemesis, um, system, Nemesis system has seen a few nice additions too. Legendary orcs are now more commonly found and your father's followers will occasionally bring you captured worms to drain for intel which is, which is nice of them. Um, Nikonomers, if N E C R O M A N C E R, again, apologize if I'm saying the name incorrectly, type enemies now have a chance to really flex their skills and raise th themselves from the dead on the spot. Which the person's writing is plain sassy. Those returning to see how the patch has changed things, I recommend trying brutal difficulty added in and an early update. Like Gravewalker difficulty, it makes enemies far more aggressive and 
damaging but boosts your power to the max. It also raises the rate at which you gain might and wrath, more special moves, as you start off with a single last chance, making it making the early game a little less unfair. Shadow of War is more fun when you die sometimes anyway. And according to US Gamer, they're pointing out that the update, at least according to what they're saying, and I think this is similar to the Rock Paper Shotgun, it says, the market is removed from the game, replacing with an update of garrison men menus that allows you to access garrison orcs, chests, trading orders, and boosts. The, sp the spoil of rewards and community challenge reward chests no longer contains orcs. Instead, that they now focus on trading orders. You can now purchase trading orders directly with the currency I said earlier. Um, Capture recruits during online vendetta and rank conquest can now be found in your garrison when you return to your world. Ca captains killed during online vende ven vendettas and rank conquests now drop gear, the same as captains killed in your world. You still receive a gear chest at the end of the mission, in addition to any gears dropped by orcs. Um, with the removal of the market, um, any unspent gold currency has been converted into gold loot chests. So, honestly, I think this is good. I think it's better late and never. But at the same time, it does feel like at they after they squeezed a whole lot of people out of the money spent on the whole microtransaction, they decided to pull this off, though. So I think it's kind of odd. The, you know the whole timing of this not to mention i also think a lot of it is basically the whole star wars battlefront 2 controversy but it is great that they finally decided to ditch this microtransaction practice and i do hope this sends a clear message to other developers after what happened with star wars battlefront 2 i think it shows that if you do pull something like that if you tie it to a progression system if you try to and you piss off a whole lot of people you're going to get a huge amount of backlash and it could damage your damage your product and damage your game in the long run do i think this is the end of microtransactions i really don't think so i think that developers will find a way to put microtransactions into 60 dollar games but I think that they're going to be a bit more careful next time of how they're going to implement it because the last thing they want is the Star Wars Battlefront 2 kind of situation though. And my personal opinion is that I really wish that microtransactions are not in these retail games. But obviously that's not going away. They might reduce them to just cosmetic items and all that stuff, which if it's cosmetics, then I mean, that's it's okay. I mean, it's not the best thing, but it's certainly better than what Star Wars Battlefront 2 is doing or what Ubisoft has done with Assassin's Creed Origins um, and Far Cry 5, which, while nowhere near the level of what Battlefront 2 is, it kind of borders very close where you do have the gold and, and per you could purchase gold in in-game currencies, but so far, none of that has affected the progression system. So it borderlines very closely so i'm um, great that warner brothers games is doing this but i feel like um after they just sucked everybody dry inside to pull the plug on this though so yes it's better late than never maybe i might consider looking at shadow of war since i skipped on that game last year and all that but it, i'm just i'm glad that a lot some developers are starting to wake up and realize you know we're going to have to approach this differently if we don't want to create the kind of situation EA did with Star Wars Battlefront 2. So it's better late than never. I don't know if it's going to change people's perception of what happened with Shadows of War, but I'm glad that they are ditching the loot boxes once and for all, though. Whether this will encourage people to maybe pick up the game now if they skipped out on it um, remains to be seen on that one. <clears throat> Okay, um, this concludes this My Two Cent video for this week. And again, these are my opinion. What are yours? What are your thoughts about the sales of Octopath Traveler? Do you think it's off to a great start? Do you think it's doing well? Do you think it will do well in the NPD numbers when, when the NT, NPD numbers are shown? 
Um, do you think we're facing a supply and demand situation with Octopath Traveler? And do you think there's any possibility we could see it come to the PS4? Or do you think that's unlikely to happen? What are your thoughts about the Stick of Truth coming to the Nintendo Switch? Are you looking forward to that game? Do you think Stick of Truth is better than Fractured But Whole? Um, are you okay with it being a digital copy, or would you rather like rather have seen a physical copy instead? What about the Banner Saga trilogy coming to the, the Nintendo Switch in a physical form? Are you happy about this? Are you looking forward to picking this up? Does the fact that <coughs> excuse me that it requires an additional download does that impact your decision to buy the physical version or does it not impact it at all what about arcane studio hiring people and mentioning that they need developers with knowledge of ps4 xbox one pc linux and the nintendo switch do you think this is an indication that arcane studio will bring their games over to the nintendo switch um and if so would you like to see ports of say Dishonor 1 and 2 or Prey or do you think they should work on something new or do you think they should do something like something exclusive like what Square Enix did with Octopath Traveler to be exact and finally what are your what are your thoughts about WB Games removing the microtransaction from Middle Earth Shadow of War do you think this is the right decision to do do you think this is a better late and never do you think this is now encourages you to maybe now you'll take a look at the game or do you feel the damage has already been done and you feel like you're not going to buy the game even after what even after what WB is doing with Middle Earth Shadow Wars right now? Do you agree with what I said in this video? Do you disagree? Do you have a difference of opinion? As always, sound off on the comment section below. Let me know what you think. Um, I hope you hit that like button. I would appreciate it. And I hope you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you do, make sure you hit the bell icon for notifications of any new videos I put up. Also, feel free to share this video if you want to, and feel free to donate to my channel if you like. You could do it through PayPal Me or Patreon. Links will be in the description of this video. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that will be soon. Until then, from Southern California, I wish you all a good day then. Bye!